Hello everyone, this is Nicholas. Acer just announced their ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition. Although it is not ready for pre-order yet, but today we are going to cover every single detail of it so that you can make an informed purchase decision. So without further ado, let's get right into it. There is a lot that we need to talk about for this laptop. We'll kick it off by talking everything under the hook, such as the CPU and the GPU. Then we'll talk about the display options. After that, we'll talk about the input and output ports. And then we'll talk about the keyboard and the touchpad. Followed by the thermal management system and some miscellaneous items. And then I'll wrap it up with something what I called what the frog. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. So let's begin by addressing the elephant in the room first. Why AMD? AMD has a bad reputation that its devices are for the stingy chip ass who cannot afford to pay for an Intel computer. However, things have changed quite dramatically in the last couple years that now AMD is capable to go head on with Intel on the high end computer market. That's the reason why AMD partnered with Asus to create this G15 Advantage Edition to demonstrate that they can be a cool kid in the gaming industry as well. But can they really live up to the hype? Let's find out. The Asus G15 Advantage Edition features the AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX processor with 8 cores, 16 threads at 3.3 GHz at regular frequency and 4.6 GHz at peak frequency. This is near the top of the Ryzen 5000 range. The chip is built on TSM 7 nanometer process and is competing head-on with Intel's 11th generation core, codenamed Tiger Lake. Next, let's talk about the heart of a gaming laptop, the GPU. The G15 Advantage Edition comes with AMD Radeon RX 6800M graphics card. This GPU is sitting on top of AMD's product stack which AMD believed that it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with NVIDIA's RTX 3080. The G15 Advantage Edition is actually the first laptop ever to feature such GPU. Real-life tests show that this new Radeon GPU can offer power between RTX 3070 and RTX 3080 in gaming tasks and actually exceed the power of RTX 3080 in non-gaming creative tasks. So this is a pretty good news for non-gamers who are actually considering buying this laptop. Next, let's talk about the RAM. The standard comes with two 8GB DDR4 dual-channel memories for a combination of 16GB. However, just like many other gaming laptops, you can easily swap them to max it out at 32GB. That should allow gamers to run any AAA titles or creators to run any programs without any issues. For internal storage, you have 500GB non-volatile memory solid-state drive. And because it's a dual M.2 slot, you can actually add an additional SSD to max it out at 1TB. This should be enough for most users, but for those who are hoping to push beyond 1TB, this may be a deal breaker for them. Of course, you can use an external SSD, but considering that this laptop only comes with one USB Type-C port, making an external SSD not an ideal solution. Next, let's talk about the display. It's a 15.6-inch screen. You have two options for the screen resolutions. You can either choose a Full HD 1080p at 300Hz refresh rate, or a W-Quad HD 1440p at 165Hz refresh rate. Both displays are IPS variants and both offer 3ms response rate. Although 300Hz refresh rate is really impressive, but even with the Radeon graphics card, pretty much no game is going to hit anywhere close to 300 frames per second because the GPU is always bound by the CPU, making most of the refresh completely wasted. So I will say the Quad actually is actually the better option over here. One thing you do need to take note is that both displays are actually targeting different color gamuts. 
The Full HD screen is targeting sRGB gamut, while the Quad HD screen is targeting P3 gamut. This shouldn't be an issue for most people, but may be a concern to those who are in the creative industry that color accuracy is extremely important to them. Next, let's talk about the input and output ports. Most ports are located at the back of the laptop, with a few located at the left-hand side of the laptop. At the back, we have one USB Type-A port, one USB Type-C port, one HDMI port, and one Ethernet jack. On the left-hand side, we have two additional USB Type-A ports and one audio combo jack. We don't have anything on the right-hand side other than the slot for the fans. Considering that the whole world is transitioning from USB Type-A to USB Type-C, Having three USB Type-A ports and only one USB Type-C port is kind of odd to me. Also, if this is branded as a high-end laptop, shouldn't you also throw in a Thunderbolt port? But you know, this is AMD. You, you can't really expect too much. Next, let's talk about the keyboard. I think Asus really deserves some credit for the design of this keyboard. First, the WSD keys the four keys that gamers will be typing even during their sleep are in translucent materials, making them really stand out and really easy to identify from the entire keyboard. Also, a few functional keys such as mute and volume up, volume down are on the upper left hand side, making them more convenient to access using your left hand instead of using your right hand, which is usually for the mouse. The arrow keys are also bigger than usual, making them easier to control. Also, the ROG Overstroke technology register key presses earlier in the stroke, enable a more responsive experience. This may be important to the action gamers in which every millisecond counts. Last but not least is that Asus scaled up the glass touchpad substantially by pumping up the overall size by 85% larger than the previous models. More space means greater precision and also more comfortable for your hands movements. But most gamers are using a gaming mouse instead of the touchpad, so this is not something that you will care too much about. Next, let's talk about the thermal management system, which is how the gaming laptop dissipates heat. The thermal management system of the G15 Advantage Edition consists of four different components. The first one is liquid metal. The liquid metal compound reduces temperature by up to 14 degrees Celsius and improves thermal transfer compared to standard thermal paste. The second component is the vapor chamber. Compared to conventional heat pipes that only transfer heat along their axis, vapor chamber design spreads heat across the entire surface creating a wider area for heat dissipation to rapidly and efficiently lower temperature in smaller spaces. The G15 Advantage Edition uses a rectangular thermal plate to draw heat away from not only the CPU and the GPU, but also the power regulation circuitry, reducing the temperature of these power components help improve long-term stability and reliability. The third component is the infrared sensor. A special infrared sensor monitors the temperature of the keyboard, so power and cooling can automatically adjust to keep the fingers cool and comfortable during marathon gaming sessions. The design places small vents around the WASD keys, allowing the fans to draw cooler air into the chassis from above. This helps keep surface temperature under 40 degrees Celsius during extended gaming sessions. Asus claims that it is up to 10 degrees Celsius lower than competing laptops. And the fourth component are the fans, which Asus called it Artflow fans. These fans are designed to maximize airflow and keep noise level low. Each one features 84 blades that vary in thickness from base to tip to maximize airflow and the blades are kept by a special aerodynamic wave pattern that minimizes turbulence and noise. These fans are crafted from a liquid crystal polymer that's strong enough to maintain its shape 
while spinning at high RPMs, even with blades slimming down to just 0.1 mm. Asus claims that despite making less noise than the previous generation, they help increase airflow by up to 17% for the CPU and 20% for the GPU. Next, let's cover a few miscellaneous items before we wrap it up. You may ask, how about the noise of the fans? Well, Asus lets you choose from three different levels of noise. The silence mode reduces noise to just 35 dB for normal daily use, which means you can barely hear the noise of the fans. The performance mode hits 40 dB, which means you can still enjoy your gaming and still not being distracted by the noise of the fans. The turbo mode will hit almost 45 dB for serious gaming, which means you hear the noise of the fan almost like boiling water. However, Asus claims that the maximum noise level are still 3 dB, lower than the previous generations. How about wireless connection? Well, one thing that AMD doesn't have is its in-house solution for wireless. So AMD partnered with a company called MediaTek to provide Wi-Fi 6. Intel's wireless connection is the best among the entire industry, so all other companies are playing catch-up. In real-life tests, the Wi-Fi connection is not ideal, it's kept being dropped from time to time. Hopefully it can be addressed in future firmware updates. But at least you have the Ethernet port for wired connection, which most gamers prefer than wireless connection. One pretty nice design touch of the G15 Advantage Edition is that it lets you customize the armor cap. So if you are not a big fan of the red one that comes with the laptop, Asus actually provides the silver one and the black one as well that you can easily swap it. And if you are so picky that these three colors are really not up to your taste, you can actually go to Asus website and create a fully customized one. With the free templates that Asus provided to give your laptop a unique characteristic. How about the battery? Well, the G15 Advantage Edition has a 90 watt hour battery. You can fast charge it with the USB Type C port. A 30 minute fast charging will give you 50% of battery life, and a full charge will give you 12 hours of video playback. Considering that most gamers plug their gaming laptops to the wall pretty much 24-7, so I don't think the battery life is a big concern for them. Alright, let's wrap this video up with something I called What the Frog? You know, I've been criticizing Samsung and Dell non-stop on their webcams. Ever since the pandemic hit us, video calling has become an essential part of our life. Considering that you can easily get a full HD 1080p webcam from Amazon or eBay for less than 10 bucks, putting a half HD 720p webcam on your highest end laptop is just completely unacceptable. People hate the video quality of those built in webcams, yet Samsung and Dell continue to put them into their most expensive laptops. Apparently, Asus learned the lesson. So instead of giving you a half HD webcam, they took out the entire webcam from the G15 Advantage Edition. If I don't have a webcam, you have nothing to criticize me. Smart, ha ha ha. I mean, <laughs> taking out the webcam in 2021 is just my boggling to me. What if I really, really want a webcam? Well, you can buy an external one from us with matching color and put on top of your gaming laptop. Additional income stream. Smart, right? Ha ha ha. Well, frog you, Asus. I'm done talking here. So there you have it. What do you think? Are you considering buying the G15 Advantage Edition? Please share your thoughts with me in the comment section below. And if this is your first time here and you enjoy this type of video, 
please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you are getting any value from this video, even just a tiny little bit, I would greatly appreciate if you can give me a big thumbs up below. This can greatly help the YouTube algorithm and let more people know about this video. By the way, one more thing. Asus has not confirmed the exact pricing of each configuration yet. It will be between $1,500 to $1,700 for the base model. It is still not yet available to purchase as of today. Once it is available, then I will put a link in the description below. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for your support as always. Please stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.